At every service interval, including the 1,000 mile service, Harley has you check the coolant. Something new to many of us Harley guys, we're not used to having any liquid cooling on our bikes. In the manual, they first off warn you that you need to use the genuine Harley Davidson antifreeze. So they offer this in a smaller bottle or a larger bottle. Both are about the same price. You're not likely to use very much of this, if any at all, to top off at the thousand mile. And if you ever need to completely change your radiator fluid, you're likely gonna need to take it to a dealer because it requires some special tools to change out all the fluid in the coolant system. This system is not gravity fed. You're gonna to have to use a special tool that compresses the system with air to feed coolant throughout the whole system to avoid any air pockets. I bought the smaller bottle because as you're gonna see, we need to top off a little bit. The good thing about this stuff is you can store it for many years in the original container, even if you've opened it. So they know if Harley's antifreeze is not available and you need to top off, you can use some mixture of deionized water and ethanol glycol based antifreeze. And this is pretty common. You'll find this at any auto parts store, but then they warn you that you should drain the system and change it back to the Harley stuff as soon as you can. I'll leave that up to you. So the first part, they're gonna have you inspect the radiator. They want you to pull that cover off and take a look at the radiator fins for any damage, any rock damage, and then they want you to clean it off, get the bugs off, and look for any leaks in any of the hoses connecting the radiator. Let's take a look. When removing your radiator guard, it really helps to turn your tire. You need a lot more room. So you're gonna pop off the both sides. I already have this one loose. So you're just gonna pull on one side and then turn the wheel and go to the other side and pop that side off. So once you have it free, it's a little tricky to get out because the fender's in the way. So you're really gonna rotate it downward, keep turning it, and that way it will slide out. With the radiator cover off, you can see the dirt and bugs gathered from riding over the summer. I like to use a brush. A wheel and tire brush works really well. So we're just gonna run that across the fins gently. You do not want to damage your fins. Back and forth. Get all those bugs out of your fins. With the radiator cover off, this is a great time to inspect all the lines and where they connect and look for any leaks or damage. At this point, you'll put the cover back on. Again, it works well to rotate the wheel to get one side started and then turn the wheel to get the other side in. You're gonna to connect to the four grommets here and here on both sides. Just push it in. The next step is to check your coolant level. They give you several warnings, including again, use only the genuine Harley antifreeze. You wanna make sure the bike is cold. You do not want to have any temperature in the bike. In my case, I let it sit overnight. If the bike is warm and you go to remove that radiator cap, there'll be pressure back there and you're likely to spray fluid everywhere and burn yourself. So let's not do that. So step one is allow the engine to cool and then we're gonna check the coolant level. You wanna make sure the level is between the cold level mark and the maximum cold level mark. Remove the reservoir from the clip and remove the pressure cap holding the reservoir vertical. As you'll see here in a minute, that's a little easier said than done. They'll have you add coolant to the system fill tube just below the reservoir coolant passage and, that, and add coolant to the outer reservoir. So this process requires a few different steps. They note here holding it vertical and then uh, slightly tipping the reservoir forward to allow coolant to flow into the outer reservoir overflow passage. You'll then check your coolant to see if it's now in, within the spec between the two cold marks. They note a picture down here, and in the picture there's a little hole that is the overflow reservoir. The center is where your coolant is, and you're gonna essentially overfill the center and then tip the extra into the overflow and then check between your two marks. Let's get to the bike. We'll start by removing our coolant reservoir. It's really attached by a grommet down here on this bracket and then this plastic clip. 
So you really just pull on it and rotate it a little bit. You can grab the hose at the bottom and it'll pop right out. You can see there's not a lot of room to work with here. And they have, they have you hold it vertically to do your check. With the bottle vertical, they have you run a flashlight behind the bottle. And you can see that the fluid is pretty dark red color. But you can also see it's currently below that cold line. So we need to add a little fluid here. I decided to remove the side cover to give me a little more room here. So this is the cap that we're trying to remove. Remember, it is full of fluid in the center. It's just the overflow that it is low. So if you take this cap off with it leaning way over, a lot of fluid's gonna pour out. So what we're gonna do is try to hold it vertical as much as we can. There's just not a lot of room here. We're gonna give it a turn. Now it goes a quarter turn, but it will not come off. You have to push down and then give it a more of a turn and it will come off. It is not unusual for some fluid to come out. So don't panic. It's not corrosive like that dot four brake fluid. So now we're ready to add the fluid, the extended life antifreeze and coolant branded by Harley Davidson. So there's no way you're gonna be able to pour that in there with any sort of grace. So I found a little squeeze bottle. I'm gonna try that and see how it works. So we'll hold this vertical as we can, and then uh, we'll squirt some of this in there. And then now it's a bit full. They have you tip it forward until it goes into the hole and fills up the overflow. This is the overflow hole that you're looking to feed fluid into. This fills the outer reservoir. So you tip it forward to get the fluid to drain into that hole. So we'll tip it forward. It's going in the overflow. So you can see we're just below the cold line. So we'll add just a little bit more. To reinstall the cap, you're gonna to have to align the little grooves in the cap with the, with the bottle. So once it seats, you're gonna simply turn it. You'll hear it click. That's your first quarter turn. And then just keep turning and it'll lock into place. Our fluid is now topped off, so we'll put the uh, cover back in place. It's important to keep the rubber groove aligned with the mount. This groove can be a little tricky to get to line in the mount, and it may pinch the rubber grommet. So you may need to do this a few times. It helps to kind of rotate it into place. And so we'll get the, uh, the top part going, and then we'll use our fingers to make sure this grommet aligns correctly. Twist and turn to get that grommet to align with that bottom mount. This can be tricky, but you're trying to get that groove aligned with the mount on both sides. Our next part of the procedure is to check the freeze point. They want you to figure out if your coolant is still healthy and will protect to the maximum low temperature. In the case of the Harley antifreeze, that's minus 35 degrees. So maybe some of you up north might try it, but I'm not going for a ride at even minus one. So looking at the manual, they offer two coolant tester part numbers. And if you Google these, you'll find uh, that one of them is a climb tool and I forget who the other manufacturer was, but they're about 200 bucks. I went on Amazon and I found a refractometer for 26 bucks. I'll put a link in the description for this one. Using this tool, you're gonna to take a sample of your coolant and then use the tool to test its freeze point. Let's take a look. The tool comes with a few accessories that you'll need, like the droppers and a cleaning cloth. The first step of the tool is to check its calibration. So you take two drops of deionized water, place them on the prism, and then flip the cap over and look through the lens. Note, you can turn the lens right or left to adjust it for your vision. You can see here that looking through the finder, we're looking at the bottom, and we want the white line to be at the water line. If that was off, you would use the supplied screwdriver, remove the cap, and adjust the screw to get that water line to line up at zero. 
The next step is to take a couple drops from your coolant reservoir. Again, put the cover down and look through the lens. You can see here that I'm about negative 31 degrees and the rating for the coolant is negative 35. So we are in with spec. The rest of the procedure is really looking for leaks anywhere. You should be doing that as you go through the system. But that is the 1000 mile service for the coolant system. I hope you found this information useful and you'll share it with someone else. Always remember, I'm an enthusiast, not a professional mechanic. So use my information at your own risk. Until next time, in the Friction Zone.